Um, so yes, I'm Nicole Klassen, surprisingly. Um, I'm also a filmmaker by trade, so I've worked in the film and media industries through the span of my career, which has been both long and short. Um, I've often produced uh, many advertising campaigns, so really glitzy car commercials, hair products with beautiful hair waving in the background, and all kinds of really cheap spaghetti adverts. Um, of course, this is not why I got into the film industry. Um, I wanted to be in the film industry and in the local cre creative industry because I wanted to tell local stories. I wanted to create localized content. You see, my parents had given me an incredible amount of um, experience, in fact, um, and we were very privileged to be able to travel to many places within South Africa and within Africa. And I was really inspired by the forms of indigenous communication that are out there and available, um, but they just can't be seen. It's almost like they had no voice and no platform to be fully expressed. And, of course, looking around in Africa, um, we don't do things by normal methods or, let's say, traditional methods. We have our own value systems. We have our own way of operating. So it goes to figure we'd have our own way of media. Um, and the technique that we use is often called oral media. It's just, it really is just indigenous communication. So oral media can be verbal and can be nonverbal as well. So if you look at sometimes in Kenya, when you're given a piece of lesso cloth, it's a beautiful fabric, rich in symbolism, but then also has text on the bottom. And the text can vary from be careful of the neighbor's wife to this is how you fertilize your soil for your mangoes. So there's this kind of knowledge transfer, information transfer, idea transfer, an incredibly rich story and cultural wealth that is harnessed or, and seen in the fabrics, paintings, um, mime work, puppet shows, and theater that we see within our indigenous cultures. And I'm, I was always just really curious, well, how do we make that available? How do we make that available within a film industry, within a music industry that is pretty much structured, structured on Western value systems and Western business models? I mean, you've all seen Zulu love letters, right? That you're passing on, it's a really non-verbal communication and letting somebody else know through the beautiful beadwork and through the choice of colors what your message is. So let me give you an example of oral media, and I'll read it for you. Give me a sec. So it says, if you should meet a crocodile, it's best that you take care. Don't take its pull. Don't pull its tail. It will cause you a great bite. Danger, danger. Now, that might sound a little bit funny and cheesy, childish, but consider that the crocodile is not an animal. The crocodile is actually a human being for young people and women to be careful of. So I'll read it again. If you should meet a crocodile, it's best that you take care. Don't take its pull. Don't pull its tail. It will cause you a great bite. Danger, danger. So these kind of systems of knowledge had been passed on, produced and reproduced within indigenous cultures for many, many decades, as many of us in this room would know. Um, and these, the people that pass, these, that pass on these stories, the custodians of this knowledge, um, the kind of influencers, the ones that, that passed on the ideas and inf information, they were storytellers, often referred to now as poets, for want of a better word, like we're if we're trying to box them. So how to get this wealth of knowledge out starts to look really complex within a traditional film, media, creative industries barrier. And in 2009, I was introduced to a woman called Emma Kay. And she was like, well, have you ever considered mobile? I was like, mobile? Like a phone, a cell phone? She's like, yes, mobile. Everybody has a mobile phone. And I was like, of course. Of course, it has to be mobile. Within the African context, 60% of Africans will experience the internet for the first time via a mobile phone. We have five times more mobile phones at hand than we do have PCs on the continent. So we're always hearing these stories about this massive digital divide and how are we going to reach that. Well, I think Af Africa is just about leapfrogging it. We're going straight from PCs, straight over, and we're going straight to mobile. We're also a feature phone market. So this little phone here is what we're buying. According to the latest Nielsen reports, we're selling 172 million feature phones, basic handsets, your really early Nokia and Samsungs with a bit of WAP enablement, not smartphones, where we're only selling 34 million phones. So given that Africa is a feature phone market, 
we started to look at how do we play with this? How do we create something that's both inexpensive, um, that's easily accessible, and now it's got to be culturally relevant, and how do we do this? So we set about creating something like, oh, do we go .mobi, do we create an application? How are we going to reach people? And it was really important that we chose technology that was simple enough and also had a directness of communication. Because if we didn't have those two things, we wouldn't allow this indigenous craft to truly come across. We needed to create a place and a platform where the storytellers would be able to shoot, upload, and connect their work, and be able to disseminate the knowledge within their audiences. And their audience could be the immediate communi community, but what mo mobile also offers is for that community to expand itself beyond its physical geographical boundaries. So we created a bit of a project, <laughs> because of course you have to prove your assumptions. And we worked with a group of mostly inexperienced filmmakers, Art and Kai Leecher. In fact, some of them had never actually picked up a, a good camera. And um, we worked with them to create one-minute pieces, and then we needed a social network. So we used, uh, we used Mixit, which is the most prolific social network in South Africa. And we created seven one-minute pieces. And the pieces were so widely consumed, shared, spoken about, that we were completely overwhelmed. And we were like, wow, look at this. The, this is the storyteller. It was like a new voice had emerged but with an ancient tradition. And these poets were talking about everything from politics to eco economics to how to take care of your vegetables, but they were doing it in a way that was accessible to people. They were using idioms, they were using language, they were using culture, dance, um, repetition, mime, um, facial expressions, gestures that were easily accessible and helped the comprehension of, of the information. And let me show, actually, let me show you a video so you can see what I'm talking about. Give me a reason not to hate you. Give me a reason to let to walk free. As I'm trapped in your body, trapped in your eyes. You took everything I believe in. You took my dreams away from me. I can still feel your hands as you touch me. I can still feel your breath as you breathe against my face. I can still hear your voice say, shh. It will be over soon. How can it be over? I travel with it everywhere I go as I try to fight it, but it be always trapped in my mind. How can I let you walk free as you made a prisoner in my own body? Give it back, maybe I'll stop hitting you. Give it back, maybe I'll let you walk free. Give it all back, my childhood, my virginity. Maybe I'll be free from your body, even from your eyes. So that piece was created by Zodidi, and as you can see, tell she's a poet. Um, in Kailicha, or an orator, um, and um, she created the piece actually for her own healing. And by making it available via mobile, she's had an extraordinary response from both young girls and young boys, and that she's actually provided a sense of healing for them too. One minute on a mobile phone, a Nokia N8. This incredible craft opens up many, many opportunities. I'll show you another video where you can really see how, you know, between mobile and oral media, they start to draw parallels. So they're both decentralized, and they're both participatory. So mobile is decentralized, participatory, it's social, it looks for people, looks for community, and so is oral media. The orator needs an audience, needs a community to interact with. So this is a piece that really challenges authority, which I think we all can relate to, um, and we've seen a lot um, in the digital age, and now gives an African voice within a rural or urban village the opportunity to play the same uh, play the same part and make a, make a significant difference. No, it's not that piece. And it's not there. <laughs> That's my name. Because of the T R C is these tears I see because of the T R C it is these tears I see because of the T R C it is these tears I see that nobody is wiping away. Please understand my stance. I'm not prone to violent outbursts, but the simplicity of my articulation seems to elude you and my remote-controlled reality is a fallacy I detest. 
I constantly win accolades for my prowess in your language, but I still languish in a prison of distrust. I was once told listening is a skill, so it's your turn now to listen to me. All I've ever wanted from you is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, my so-called God, because the sanctification of Utatu Mandela is not enough. Nias Niel. Mothers and fathers are still wailing like Bob Marley or Peter Tosh. So please understand our stance. We're not radicals who carry guns. All we've ever wanted was the location of the bones so as to take him home. So as you can tell, this new storyteller practicing an old craft is very vocal, very opinionated. They know clearly what they want. Um, and that really comes through through the mobile device where everything's accessible to them um, in a way that's meaningful to them and, and their own communities. Um, so <laughs> you can imagine when all this content started coming in and I wanted to start classifying things and putting things in genre boxes and stuff. And, I was like, okay, this is great, but what is it? Is it a drama? Is it an action? Is it, what is it? Because each piece actually had a meaning and it had a specific reason for existing. So beyond entertainment, it was there for a reason and it was created with some kind of um, need to communicate, need to be heard um, and be expressed. So, of course, as we're working through this project, we've now created a fantastic mobile application which actually rolls out to market tomorrow. I'm not excited. <laughs> and I guess what we really are making available and what we hope to make available is that we start really seeing a, a shift in the balance of power from intellect, sort of individual intelligence and institutionalized intelligence to a form of collective intelligence, a place where knowledge, um, old stories, craft traditions are made available and accessible, then distributed and networked um, into this new world. So, well, on a new device. Um, so if I leave you with anything today, um, I hope that next time you look at, it, you, at your phone, you ask yourself what your story is. Am I being heard? Am I being fully expressed? And you look at that device and think, shoot, upload, connect. Thank you. <laughs>